What's up guys, welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. Today we're going to be taking a look at an amazingly very accurate, very motivating. One of the best movies of dare, all time. Dare I say inspirational movies that has ever been made. Did you just look at to see what it's called? <laughs> I saw <it. laughs> I forgot what it's called. <laughs> Sniper start. Special Ops, son. Sniper <sighs> Special Ops. That sounds like I named it and yeah. decided to shoot my own movie about special operations. I feel, it, so, it sounds like a 12 year old bro. I cannot like, possibly imagine with all the people that I've met, all the operators I've met, all the, the people that have been in any, any form of special force that I met through you guys, that they would ever look at a movie and say, Let's call it Sniper, sniper Special, special ops. ops. Like actual Spec Ops using s the Spec Ops thing. And yeah. It, it, I get it. Whatever works. Sure. When, but when you have the credentials to back it up, mm -hmm. you got some leeway. Or God forbid you just have like a good director or a competent videographer or a good audio guy or maybe somebody with writing skills or any of those things whatsoever. Any of those things. You could probably get away with it. Right. But that's not the case for this movie. In this movie, Everything goes wrong. <laughs> Everything goes wrong. <laughs> I am convinced that Steven Seagal at this point makes movies for people to make memes out of and for people to mock. Comment, comment on, on, comment down below on how you feel about Steven Seagal. I personally think that he's leading on the best ruse and the best ploy that's ever been carried out on American media and said, all right, guys, <laughs> all right, guys, <laughs> we can either get in front of this or we can, or get, we behind can get behind it. it. Right, and, and I don't was, get behind it. And he's like, I'm gonna be a complete heel, and I'm just gonna play into it, and I'm gonna make movie after movie after movie, while no matter what happens, people like us in we'll 2023 will keep saying the name Steven Seagal. All right, so before we just start saying that this movie is terrible and bad, 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 don't watch. And honestly, I, I think it's awesome in a certain kind of way. If you guys seen Sniper Special Ops, tell us what you think, but let's jump in and start breaking it down. I'm gonna look at it from a special forces point of view. Abel's gonna talk about it from a civilian perspective and bounce off some questions. And we're gonna break down this movie and see what we think. I mean, Under Siege was like before I was born. This guy's been playing a special operations guy since before I was born. Let's see if he lives up to the hype and if he can actually take all those years of experience and do something right. Let's dig in to Sniper Special Ops. See that? <laughs> oh. oh my gosh, dude. Ah. <laughs> Three minutes in, and there's just so many blaring inaccuracies. First of all, the rifle's not suppressed. So the fact that it goes pew. <laughs> Second of all, even a suppressed rifle doesn't make a pew <laughs> sound. I don't know where they pulled that audio clip from, but that is not what a suppressed rifle sounds like. I don't understand if you have a $5 million budget, why you can't go to the range, shoot a suppressed rifle and get some recorded sounds, or just pull it from the audio tracks of the hundreds and hundreds of military movies that have already been made with suppressed rifles mm -hmm. and pull an accurate suppressed rifle sound. And if you're going to make a suppressed rifle sound, maybe in the movie, you should make the rifle suppressed. <laughs> Just a thought. And second, this guy's supposed to be a super advanced sniper. I'm not even talking about just the character. Steven Seagal himself claims to be an amazing marksman and an avid gun, sh an avid shooter. So he would know how, even if you're just like a couple times, tried it out, really tried to punch out a long range target, you would know how to have your finger on the trigger. You don't put your finger wrapped up all the way into the second knuckle uh, of the trigger. The whole point of the weapon system is first of all, most snipers take the thumb off the trigger and you use the very, very tip to, are you sucking on your finger? I'm sorry. We're not just moving on from that. What were you doing? I gotta bring it back for a second. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole point of the weapon system is you want as little effect on the sniper rifle as possible. So think about anything you do potentially moves it. And if you're punching out to a really long range, you want as little movement as possible. So you set up sandbags, you try to get it supported, you're resting your rifle uh, in the most comfortable position. Again, sandbags. Cheek position is everything. And then just use just the tip of your finger to slow pull that and make sure you're as accurate as possible. So he just shoves his giant fat finger 
<laughs> all the way in that trigger guard, and he's just like, kata, kata. He takes up the majority of the, Dude, like there's, the part in front of the trigger. He's like monkey gripping it, and then his whole fat <laughs> finger is in that trigger guard. It's like there's no way you're going to be this amazing sniper. And then third, with your little stupid grip and your ping BB gun, why would you shoot the container out of his hand? You need to think about what you just said. <laughs> Vincent Vargas is FaceTiming right now. Right now. Oh, uh, we should probably leave that on camera, right? From the Mayans, Vincent Vargas. Is this an accident? Yo! Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, <laughs> we're filming our show right now. You're on camera, Vinny. You're good. <laughs> oh, you're good, man. I was like, is this Vincent Vargas FaceTiming me right now? <laughs> what's Yo. up how are you man good how are you you want to be on the show <laughs> yeah you're you're on the show we're you're on the show we're right taping now. We're right taping now, right now. <laughs> hey buck I'll yeah. hey right. hey all right sounds good brother i was just showing off <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, so you guys keep doing your thing. hell yeah brother talk to you later, later. peace that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say a YouTube executive? Yeah, he said a YouTube executive said my favorite show was Beers and Breakdowns. And he goes, oh, I know, Buck. Well, I guess we're not me, shadow we're bands. Fearing, <laughs> we're filming Beers and Breakdowns as he calls. I was like, I was just this shocked. That just happened right like, now? Like, is Vincent Vargas calling me right now? FaceTime? Like, hell yeah. To tell us a YouTube executive loves our show. And he said, I know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, sometimes things could just show up and tell you that you're not doing it wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? And thank you, Vincent. That wow, was really that was cool. Awesome. That was awesome. Yeah. I feel starstruck for Vincent to just FaceTime me. That felt good. Dog tags on the ground. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm only laughing because you're laughing. I honestly have no idea what's wrong with the elbow, but Are you serious? to see his elbow sitting out like this, well, does it look wonky? Not, not to me. To me, I would assume that whoever's holding a gun going into something, they're going to be holding it the most comfortable for them. I wouldn't assume. I'd assume that as long as there's a certain amount of principle that's held there, the rest of it is just left to comfortability. So I don't know if it's like right or wrong. Or no, he just he just doesn't know what he's doing, and he's trying to clear, and he doesn't know what to do with the buttstock in his shoulder. So a buttstock's compressed in your shoulder for an accurate shot. You want to tuck that chicken wing in and pull it in tight. But once you have that pulled in, your rifle's so long that it's not the best case scenario for every situation. Sometimes you need to cut a tight corner. So the answer to that is you remove the buttstock from your shoulder pocket and you go over your shoulder. So that way your rifle goes from this long to this long. Mm -hmm. And now you can clear a corner and you can shoot from here and then redig and re-engage mm -hmm. once you've cleared your corner. I see. So what he's trying to do is like get his chicken wing up and he's just <laughs> like doing this. I don't know what that chicken wing is. Is that like, like the rifle equivalent to holding your gun like this yeah, in the it's ghetto? Like, like, like the when side it's sideways. Cop. And when I'm like this and you see my elbow up, you're like, he's making fun of him, but then he's putting his elbow up. What I'm simulating is the buttstock going from here to here over my shoulder. So my, my pistol grip's here. I C clamp it, I got it plugged into my shoulder. I'm gonna go around a corner, I pull it off my, sh my shoulder pocket, punch it over top of my shoulder. So that way I reduce the length of my rifle by about a foot. So it's only until it has to be back here that it is back there. Right, and then once it's forward, you're not walking around with your elbow just hanging out out here. That doesn't make any sense. intimidating, bro. To have he's your like, elbow what's out up, like that. bro? Yeah. He's like, what's up, He's bro? not just walking in, what's he's up, got bro? his elbow out and he's like, bro, I'm either gonna shoot you or elbow the out of you. One of the, I'll elbow your whole family right now. <laughs> That's his tertiary, son. <laughs> tertiary. So, spoiler alert, if you guys don't know, the goofy looking dude with sleeves missing and his giant, like, dumb tattoos, he's, I'm not making fun of him. <laughs> I was I, like, what if it's his real tattoo? <laughs> I think that's a dumb tattoo, but <laughs> I'm not making fun of him. I'm making fun of the outfit they put him in because they made him look like um, they, they, they took the green. This guy's an actual green beret. So the guy right here in the sleeveless shirt is an actual green beret. And so 
I feel like they took his character and because he has big arms, they're like, he should go sleeveless, show them guns. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, let yeah. him dress like he would because he knows what he would wear. I guarantee it wasn't his idea to walk in sleeveless in kit. He looks stupid. Contact. Fuck you say? Maintain my six? Something about your fire station? Maintain my six? Oh, I did that in Bass Pro Shop. So clearly Steven Seagal has a seat that they gave him <laughs> a chair. to sit down. So he always has a chair in every start of every scene. So he starts in his little chair and he's supposed to be the sniper, the overwatch. Yeah. But then the minute they take contact, he just stands up from his chair, has an AR-15, tells that guy to watch his six, starts shooting, and then switches to weak hand and starts shooting again. I don't know if you guys know this, but the whole point, you shoot strong hand when you want to actually hit your target. And the only time you switch to weak hand is if you're at a barrier. So let's say we're at a wall. I'm strong hand and the wall's on my left side. Instead of crossing all this and exposing my arm, my head, everything to get my sights down that wall, I'd have exposed all this. That's when I would punch out, switch hands, punch back into this shoulder pocket, and now look how much, how less is exposed on that weak side. And then I'll start shooting weak side. And then punch out, punch it into the opposite pocket, switch hands, and then shoot. So he just saw it on a movie or something and starts switching to weak side for no reason and starts shooting it wide out in the open. What a horrible idea. You know he's got a hemorrhoid pad sitting in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, a, <laughs> like a heated, He's got seven tubes of preparation. Yeah. He's, the side he's got a heated building. hemorrhoid pad with like an <laughs> ice bath for his feet because his ankles swell. Oh. What is Steven Seagal dodging? You're sitting on top of the roof. He's like. <laughs> Movie critics? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it took him out. First of all, this scene pisses me off because they make the Green Beret the only probably tactician in this entire movie. It gets killed. Just stand out in the open and be the first to get shot? Yeah. Why would you do that? Why would you take the only person that knows how to actually shoot and kill him immediately? There's clearly other stars in this scene. You, it's like, dude. They're about to be, their characters are about to about develop. About to develop, yeah, yeah. In this cinematic masterpiece. Mm-hmm. First of all, you force him to do something he wouldn't do, and that's just stand out in the open shooting in the middle of a gunfight. I think multiple guys get shot by standing in the middle of like an entire road, reloading. Yeah, and then the guy that comes to save him shoots to, as cover fire, jams, and starts trying to fix his jam, staring at his gun. Like somehow he's magically not in a gunfight anymore. We don't do that either. If I'm in a gunfight and I click and it goes jam, that bitch gone. This isn't a gun anymore. This is a paperweight that needs to get out of my hands. And I'm going to switch to another gun that's going to work. I'm not even considering how to fix the jam. The minute I pull the trigger and it goes click, it's out of my hands. I don't just drop it, I throw it. And I'm moving it out of the way to get to my secondary and get back in the gunfight. I'm not even thinking about that jam. Mm-hmm. Once the gunfight's cleared, I'm gonna take cover and from cover, I'll fix the malfunction. First, I'm gonna keep my, my uh, secondary weapon system out, which is now my primary, because it's the only one that works. I'm gonna check, bring it up to my workspace so I'm not looking down see what kind of jam it is. Once I know that I could fix it, put my secondary away, fix it, boom, boom, and I'm back up. I'm gonna let my guys know, back up, and then I'm back in the fight. I'm not just gonna stand in the middle of a alleyway where my boy just got shot and go, oh man, man, then they working, man. Time out, time out, dog, time <laughs> out.
<laughs> he just did he, shoot did him. He fucking <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know why they gave, first of all, give that lead actor the lead actor role. So when you guys are holstering your weapon, regardless of the weapon, do you guys do as many shots as you can before it gets back no. into its holster position? He was like, he looked away and then went pow, 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 <laughs> and then walked away. He's like, like, all right, guys, we're good. Thanks. Back into my back fling. No, typically we don't just. Uh, That's good to know. Start popping off rounds without looking. It would be like, like send a net, send a net. What's up? Be a lot of dead families if you guys did do it that. Dude. Way. And then the guy calling out on the radio is like, send everything you got. <laughs> a break, break, break. Like what? You were done with what you're saying. The only time you say break and you don't say break, break, break. You say break when because the whole point of radio transmissions in the military is to break up long conversations in case someone else needs the net. The idea is if I'm talking, someone else can't be. So I never want to just hold up the net for long periods of time. So I'll say, hey, we need overwatch our position break. Wait for a second to see if anyone else needs to jump in, because in that second, you can get another unit saying, you know, hold the air, emergency, under contact, we got two down or, or eagle down, you know, one man down, American down, and he'll cut you and you have to let him have it mm -hmm. because his situation's more dire than yours is. Right. So that's the reason you say break is to let someone potentially jump in on you that's having an emergency. So you would say something like, we got coordinates at break. Wait a sec. Five, four, three, two, one, break. Three, six, five, seven. And the break is to let them know I'm not done, but I'm breaking up my transmission in case anyone needs to step on me. Yeah. So to just, he finished his sentence. He's like, break, break, break. Let us know when the vehicles are coming in. And then literally two seconds later, the vehicles are like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Cooper. Congressman Cooper, I'm Sergeant Murphy of the U.S. Army. Take me back to base. <laughs> it's like, this movie sucks. <laughs> Am I awake? How did my life end up here? I guarantee you the actor that's playing him wishes that he was a captured congressman instead of a low-grade actor in yeah. Steven Seagal's movie. Dude, I, I looked it up while we were watching this. I was like, like, what do these actors do? Where are they from? Like, there was not one actor who's been in this that's done a decent role. Mm -hmm. It's literally like, hey, dude, can we, will you do this for free to be in a Steven Seagal movie? <laughs> and every one of them was like, yep. And they're like, all right, cool, come on. And I'm not even dogging them. You have to live that way in Hollywood mm -hmm. to, to, to succeed, right? You have to do things for free. You have to be able to take a cut. I get that. I'm not dogging the actors. But what, what bothers me is when you have... Steven Skull is supposed to be this big name and a multi-million dollar budget and you can't afford one actor that's known. Yeah. And then the one actor that is known is the biggest, shittiest actor <laughs> that's existed since 1980 outside of Under Siege. Job of the hood. You know, and, and he's in it for five minutes sitting in five chairs. It just doesn't make sense to me. But this scene bothers me because it's like one of their guys gets shot the uh, uh the the um spotter mm -hmm. so you got sniper your sniper team one of the guys from the sniper team gets shot and you just leave both of them you no we don't just leave each other behind like that that's fucking mm -hmm. ridiculous like the mission is the high value target i'm like well when you leave an american behind he then becomes, becomes the a high value, value target. target yeah so you just left one to take one you left two to take one so now they got to run just as many operations to go save your own guy. Yeah. That's the stupidest thing ever. No, no person is going to just like supersede an American soldier and then we're going to leave a, a people behind. That's the dumbest thing ever. Right. 1915, which is when he was born. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was funny. It's never going to be safe. Look. You may have finagled your way onto this combat outpost, and you may be Admiral Willett's niece, but none of that buys you a ride outside this wire. It's just too damn dangerous. I'll have you know I was in bed. Bro, this boss. Yeah. 
<laughs> this lieutenant looks like the guy who created Marvel before he passed away. <laughs> Stanley. <laughs> this guy looks like Stanley's twin brother, bro. Like two weeks before the end. Oh, this dude God. is old as shit. I've never <laughs> seen a 92 year old lieutenant colonel in my life. His turkey neck is almost on his rank, bro. <laughs> this guy's got a sail underneath his chin. Look at that thing. He's oh, so God. old, bro. He was like, and then he's telling her, this journalist, he's like, you may be General so-and-so's niece. I'm like, I'm starting to think that every actor in this movie is related to the person who made it. She's an admiral. He was an, she's an admiral's niece. An admiral's niece. Admiral. I'm starting to think that, like, every actor in this movie is the director's niece. They say it twice, by the way. There's only this time, and then, like, next time he tries to say some kind of a weird, fun little catchy line while they're shooting stuff... She was like, my uncle wouldn't like that. Oh, is that what it was when he elbowed her in the tit? And I didn't know until right now. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, he grabbed her by the neck. But then he elbowed and her in the like, tit. she was like, normally I would like that, but I don't think my uncle would like that right now. I can't feel anything. Lieutenant Dan, you ain't got no legs. You got a round nodge in your spine. I stopped her bleeding, but there's really not much more I could do for now. We're going to have to wait until some folks get here. <laughs> Who will that be? He can't even get out of his chair to look at him. I know. <laughs> can't fix this damn thing. Look at his belly. Probably we won't. He's sitting down the whole time. He won't even, his guy's got a bullet dodged in his spine. You can't even look at him. You know, I'm surprised that Steven Seagal was willing to let himself not be known as a medical professional as well. Yeah, you think he would just fix it. Well, he tried. He's like, I stopped the bleeding. There's nothing else we could do I, to support it. I guarantee you that scene started with him saying, I will identify exactly what's wrong and I will fix his spine and make him walk again. Yeah. And they were like, no. He's <laughs> like, are you sure? He's like, yeah. He's like, because I was a surgeon for 35 years. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys haven't seen the bit that Tom, Tom Segura, Segura that he does on Steven Seagal, it is great A comedy. So good, dude. And you got you to check it out. <laughs> he was talking about him being a cop and he's like, he's like, you see that dog? He's like, yeah. He's like, that's a Cholua. He's like, how, <laughs> how do you... <laughs> It's a Shih Tzu. Shits, that's a Shih Tzu. He's like, how do you know? He's like, I bred dogs for 25 years. <laughs> I flew a helicopter for 25 years. <laughs> he said the helicopter went by. He's like, you hear that thing? That's a twa 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 twa. They call that a skippy. A skippy. He's, like, he's like, why? You don't hear it? He goes, skip, 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 skip. <laughs> we done broke the comms and all this excitement. Yeah. Yeah. It was a very long day, brother. We done broke the comms? Oh. Yeah. Sergeant Chandler. <laughs> Sergeant Chandler. Oh my god. Are you really as good as they all say you are? Oh my god. Everyone's <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Wild. And then click to oh, black and white. And you baby. called it too before they did I it. Said you're, it. All, you're all going as, to black and white. As soon as she pulled up the camera, I was like, click to black and white, click to black and white. And she goes, click. Black and white. I was like, yeah. But they didn't do a filter over it to make it look grainy. No. So they literally just, just changed it just, to black Just changed the color. They just yeah. desaturated the color. Yeah. Not to mention the beginning of it when he's talking to that guy, the, whoever was in charge of the mission, and then he meets up with him later. And it's like, I understand that at the end of a mission in a movie, like a really good military movie, there's a little bit of back and forth, and there's typically one like thing that you know I know that you'll say before you leave, right? So mm. it's like one little remark. They did this ping pong thing with like one-liners back and for forth. the entire conversation so he was just like yeah well maybe if you were there you wouldn't have been there only if you owe me 60 bucks only if it's tomorrow only if your car is gray <laughs> <laughs> just like keep going <laughs> back and forth all right guys hope you enjoyed that episode if you made it this far do us a favor like subscribe hit the bell notification comment down below as to what you think about steven skull and if somehow <laughs> Steve Skull, if you watch this, which I know you won't, but if you do, from one special operations soldier to another. To another. <laughs> do us all a favor and please stop making these movies, man. Because this shit's fucking embarrassing. And you're embarrassing yourself. <laughs> Just cut it out, bro. Drop the mic. Walk away. Cut we'll see you guys out. on the next episode. Peace. Bye. That was a good show. I should get drunk more often before we film. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! That's how we started this. It was like